you are just tuning in or, or switching on the radio this morning, you join us uh, from a beautiful sunny morning just outside Glorious. Buckingham Palace. It's really absolutely Lovely. amazing. And we've been reflecting all morning <laughs> on that kind of hub, that hive of activity, that mm. sense of excitement that's building. Lots of important work going on, uh, not just cleaning and making sure that all of the uh, bells and whistles are ready for the pageantry, but also to make sure that everything is secure and safe. We've seen the police dogs, haven't we, in the last half hour. And actually, and just over dogs, our yeah. shoulder, um, we can see police officers uh, preparing just to make sure everything is safe. It's a really important job. Yes, we had to get our way past the police this morning and they were, you know, they were all smiles, but you know, you don't, you want to stay on the right side of them. <laughs> this is difficult though, isn't it, when yeah. it comes to, to security for something this high profile. Um, let's talk to former head of Royal Security, Di Davis, who joins us now, I think, from Snowdonia. Mm, aren't you, lovely. Di? Beautiful. Um, look, I mean, it, there must be a tremendous amount of planning goes into something like this. Well, very good morning to you, yes, and I'm as excited as everybody else. But yes, in truth, there will have been months and months of preparation, uh, both by the police, the security services, and even GCHQ. Because uh, sadly, we have to remember we're still at that middle level of the five tiers of security in this country. And it says a, a, a terrorist attack is likely. Uh, not imminent, but, you know, the Met Police, who are in overall uh, charge of all the security for here, and indeed some of Windsor, they will have spent months and months, and they're very, very good. They've been doing this for so long now. They have uh, particularly good teams doing it. And in addition, of course, you have my former colleagues, who again, as far as I'm concerned, are world-class in terms of protection. Uh, well, in terms of uh, the protection um, that the Sussexes have required, it's been a bit of an ongoing row, hasn't it, with Prince Harry uh, threatening to sue uh, the government and the Home Office in particular because he was told the Met Police were not for hire. And yet, here he is. He's brought his whole family, his little children, Lilibet and Archie, as well, along with his wife, uh, Meghan. And he's been given, uh, in inverted commas, cast iron assurances that he will be uh, provided with security for the four-day Platinum Jubilee. What will that involve? And I presume that means the row is ancient history. Well, again, uh, I've been commenting a little while on your program and others about this. And again, what I always said, if the security assessment uh, actually determines that he should get protection, then he will get that protection. And of course, uh, living uh, where he is now um, in Frogmore House and within the auspices of Buckingham Palace and going to be there with Her Majesty, then clearly uh, he will get the requisite uh, security. Um, whether he will get it when he, if he went off piste, as it were, I don't know. At the end of the day, he's here. If that makes Her Majesty happy on this anniversary, that makes me happy as well. It must be very difficult for those, those people working security. We're all having a great time. We're enjoying the moment and the celebration. But, but for those people, whether it's the Met Police or whether it is the Royal Security Team, I mean, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a hard four days, isn't it, Di? Well, it is, uh, but they, you know, they've had years and years of experience. I'm a historian now. One of the things I have and I do lecture on is the history, sadly, on attacks on, on the Royal Family. And Her Majesty is no different to any other of her predecessors. You know, there have been some numerous individuals and plots against her in that 70 years. Obviously, some of it I, I can't talk about because it's still an official secret, but some of it are public knowledge. And unfortunately, being the head of state, uh, there are individuals and terrorist groups who have plotted, are plotting, uh, I've no doubt, against her and other members of the royal family. And that's where the huge strain comes. It's not just terrorism. It's those people who are fixated, those who want publicity, those who are mentally ill. So you have a whole raft of individuals uh, since George III. Uh, it never ends, I'm sad to say, because there are those individuals and organizations. In my day, it was the provisional IRA who were my greatest concern. Now it's ISIS, Al-Qaeda uh, and others. You know, in the last few days, we've heard of people trying to get into Buckingham Palace and they do almost on a weekly basis and other royal residences. Mm. But it's not just the Queen, it's, it's her whole family that one has to protect. And indeed, indeed, in my day, we had 22 of them. 
Mm, well, look, as you say, though, the best in the business die, and they will keep everyone safe, I'm sure. It's really good to talk to you this morning. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure. And you have a good uh, well, day we've yourselves. Been lots of. Thank you, Di. Enjoy Snowdonia. We'll uh, make the best of Buckingham Palace whilst we're here. Uh, look, we've been asking for you to get in touch this morning, people at home, viewers, listeners, wherever you may be, with your memories, with your thoughts, or indeed how you're celebrating. And uh, we've been sent this from Great Gran Marlene. She says, good morning, all. Uh, my beautiful great-grandson, Dennis, very excited, is all dressed up and ready for our Queen's Jubilee. We hope you all have a great day. Yeah, and if, wow, I'll that's tell you what, absolutely if, if, superb. If,